The world's most famous long-range electric scooter just got the biggest upgrade yet. For 2023, it got more power, better ride quality, and a noticeable boost in performance. Ever since the cruiser's arrival in 2019, no scooter has even come close in terms of range per dollar. But there's more to this scooter than range. This thing ruins the curve on almost every performance graph when we compare it to other single motor scooters, which is part of the reason it ends up in pretty much every top 10 list in its class. This is the 2023 Emu Cruiser S. We fully tested it to see what's new, what's better, and we'll also show you the one performance test that came out slightly worse and why. The Cruiser is designed by one of the biggest scooter brands in the US, Vora Motors, based in Los Angeles, California, and it's one of their best-selling scooters with more than 50,000 cruisers on the road now. So just like with Coca-Cola or the Porsche 911, they had to be careful not to change a winning formula too much. So they kept the good stuff like the LG batteries, the roomy surfboard shaped deck, long range, and best of all, while it seems like everything else is getting more expensive, the 2023 eMove Cruiser S is the same price as last year's Cruiser, but it does get a new sine wave motor controller pushing 1600 watts of peak power. And when we weighed them back to back, the 2023 Cruiser S came out three pounds lighter than the 2021 version. So what's it like to ride? Well, before I dive into the details, I was riding around my neighborhood yesterday and I was thinking the Cruiser S has got main scooter energy, you know, like main character energy, but for scooters. Yes, it's a single motor scooter and yes, it's something that just about anybody can ride, but its performance is absolutely extra. It's like a conventional single motor scooter boosted to 150 or 200% output. For example, while we commend some single motor scooters for having enough speed and power to briefly pull out of the bike lane and blend with traffic when you need to, the cruiser has enough power to just go out there and hang with traffic for basically as long as you want. Then it's got a long roomy deck, quad suspension, and 10 inch air filled tubeless tires that make it comfortable to ride for hours, but comfort was something it always had. Now it gets improved ergonomics in the form of a standard thumb throttle rather than a trigger throttle. But for those of you who are about to comment that you love the trigger throttle, not to fear, it's still an option. Or a twist throttle, or even a paddle style thumb throttle, though I don't recommend the paddle style one because it has a fairly large dead zone at the beginning of travel. Whichever throttle you choose, at the other end is a sine wave motor controller that gives you more power and a smooth, silent ride with zero lag. In fact, throttle response is a little snappier than most sine wave controllers we've tried. If you max out the P settings, the power can be a little abrupt. For performance testing, I ran the P settings maxed out, but for normal cruising around, I found that the default P settings gave the best ride quality. This next thing I'm gonna talk about isn't really ride quality, but definitely part of life with an eMove Cruiser. You get to an experience an almost complete lack of range anxiety. If you've never ridden a really long range scooter like this, just imagine feeling normal to ride for like 10 miles without even looking down at your battery meter. It definitely changes how you apply throttle and your whole state of mind while riding. Another thing we don't talk about that much, but you know, it's a real thing, is a scooter's image. Okay, so this isn't a flashy scooter that you'd show off with, but what I like about it is that it's instantly recognizable. The Cruiser is a scooter that tends to be ridden by people who know about scooters. No offense to the scooters I'm about to mention, but when you're on a Cruiser, you're not riding a a Swagger 5 or a Joy R or however you pronounce that or this thing here. I don't want to belabor the point, but here's a quick real world example. We had a guy show up for a job interview at HQ riding an eMove Cruiser once, and I'd be lying if I said that didn't help his odds. Okay, so back to hardware. Aside from the throttles, the Cruiser is all around one of the most customizable scooters out there because Vora has more factory accessories than I know of for any other scooter, including storage, a grab handle, and a new cool looking throne style seat. Over at the opposite grip from the throttle, you've got the switch for the main headlight, as well as your horn button and turn signal switch. The Cruiser is one of the first scooters to come with turn signals. We love that they beep and also double as brake lights, but wish it also had them at the front of the scooter. Instead, we get another set of headlights in the deck, controlled by a round metal switch right here. Let's check out build quality. One of the things that strikes me about the eMove Cruiser is this is a scooter that's gonna last a long, long time if you take care of it, and here's why. LG battery cells are known for longevity, but there's a much bigger factor. When you have a battery that's almost three times the size of the battery in the new 9Bot Max G2, it means that you only need to charge the Cruiser about a third as often to cover the same number of miles. So the lifespan, you know, the number of years you can get out of this battery, should be three to five times as long as a conventional scooter, since the lifespan is mostly a 
function of the number of times a battery gets charged from empty to full. So how does one take care of an eMove Cruiser S? Well, it's the same as any scooter. It comes down to checking for loose bolts once every month or so, applying Loctite to anything you find loose, checking tire pressure every week or two, and like all scooters, don't park it for months on end at less than 20% charge or more than 80% charge. The only real difference here is the Cruiser does have more fasteners than some other scooters. So you'll wanna pay special attention to the areas that get a lot of force applied to them, like the folding system and the front suspension. The Cruiser S comes in six colors. We've got the orange here, which is one of Voro's signature colors, but I really like the way the white and the blue show off the surfboard vibe of this scooter. The overall build is more old school than modern, but that's because just like the design of a Porsche, a machete, or a crocodile, they didn't change it because it works fine the way it is. One advantage of being a less integrated scooter is if you ever need to repair it, it's easier to do, especially now that every connector on the scooter has gone plug and play. I can't overemphasize what a big deal this is when you need it. For example, without being able to unplug the motor cable, changing a rear tire means wrestling with the whole scooter while you change the tire. Because it has tubeless tires, it means it doesn't have split rims, which means tire changes aren't quite as easy. So I wanted to share a weird hack I discovered during my week of checking out the Cruiser S. If you ever need to put a front tire on a Cruiser, pop one side on first, then install the wheel on the scooter, and use the scooter to hold the wheel while you do the second half of the tire install. The second half is always the hardest part. Once it's on, it also really helps to have access to compressed air to reseal the tire to the rim. The results of our performance tests are up next, but first, if you're interested in the eMove Cruiser S, be sure to use the link you'll find in this video's description. It helps support this channel, plus we'll put any coupon codes we've got for you down there as well. I do a ton of data analysis behind the scenes for the performance sections of these reviews, but we don't always show you all the graphs because, you know, graphs can be boring and they can be hard to read in the one to two seconds that we have to share them with you. But this time you just have to see them because the Cruiser S is such an anomaly that it just kind of crushes the whole graph when compared to other scooters by weight and price. In our two direction top speed run on flat ground, the eMove Cruiser S went 31.7 miles per hour. That means traffic or no traffic, this is a scooter that can beat a car across town. That's 1.2 miles per hour faster than our test of the 2021 Cruiser. The only single motor scooter I've tested that went faster was the Segway GT1, which costs almost twice as much and went 34.5 miles per hour. Cruisers are also the only single motor scooters we've ever tested that covered more than 40 miles on our range test course, and it's not even close. In fact, if we plot the Cruiser S with all of the scooters, including the dual motors, the Cruiser's next nearest neighbors have either 10 miles less range if you want to stay at the same price, or $2,500 more dollars if you want the scooter with the next higher range in our database. The 2023 Cruiser S covered 43.6 miles in top gear, riding aggressively on our hilly urban range test course. That's actually 3.4 miles fewer than I rode on the previous Emu Cruiser, but I think I know why. The new Cruiser S is a faster scooter, so I was riding about one mile per hour faster the whole time. And while I rode the 2023 Cruiser S standing up, we had the seat on the 2021 Cruiser, so I did that range test sitting down and had slightly less wind resistance. The Cruiser S is the second quickest accelerating single motor scooter we've tested with a zero to 30 time of 17 seconds, beating the 2021 Cruiser by a whopping 4.5 seconds. The Cruiser S's sine wave motor controller gives it improved hill climbing too. The 2021 Cruiser was already the second fastest single motor hill climber, but the S beats it to the top of our steep one block long test hill by half a second and was accelerating the whole way. It's gonna handle any hill you're likely to encounter. Cruiser's long and low deck plus semi hydraulic disc brakes front and rear give it some of the best stopping power for the money. There's also improved regen braking that showed up in a slightly better tested stopping distance. From 15 miles per hour, the Cruiser S stopped in an impressive 10.1 feet, beating the previous Cruiser by a third of a foot. With its enormous battery, the Cruiser S is one of the heavier single motor scooters out there, despite using lightweight 21700 battery cells. But size-wise, it's still surprisingly portable, and that's because in addition to folding handlebars, the stem also gets shorter if you wanted to. So it's gonna fit in the trunk of your car or apartment with no problem. That said, when you're not riding it, this is definitely a scooter that you'll want to push rather than carry when given a choice. Here are some pros and cons of the Cruiser's closest competitors based on hands-on testing. The Fluid Vista also has great top speed for the price and a huge comfortable deck. And it's the fastest scooter we've tested that comes with flat-proof solid tires. It has a very modern looking design and includes an app. On the other hand, the single motor Vista is seven pounds heavier than the Cruiser and has much less range. The Dualtron Mini is gorgeous, 
fast and intuitive to ride, but it's a little pricey relative to performance, has no front brake, and despite its name, is very long when folded, so it's not as portable as you'd think. Solar's P1 2.0 is a dual motor scooter that sneaks into this group because it has a single motor price. So it has the rapid acceleration and top speed you'd expect from a dual motor scooter, which is definitely a plus for some. On the other hand, not something everybody's looking for. It's also got good ride quality, but the tested weight was nine pounds more than the Cruiser S and the P1 2.0 has 41% less range. So what do we think of this updated eMove Cruiser S? I think Voro Motors has made a very smart revision here by being very careful not to change too much. The Cruiser S is by all measures a better Emu Cruiser. Yes, range was down a little, but that's because I went faster. Now, sometimes when I go to sum things up here at the end, the differences that make or break a scooter can be fairly subtle, but the Cruiser S's virtues are easy to see in the numbers. Numbers aside, the Cruiser's appeal spans a pretty wide range of riders because the brisk yet not too crazy performance and the overall ride quality feels good whether you're 150 pounds or 350 pounds. It's at the top end of what I consider a beginner scooter, both in terms of price and performance, a good fit for pretty much all intermediate riders, and many expert riders like myself will enjoy it too. On the other hand, it's not for someone who wants the very latest tech, and obviously not something you can just carry around like an Unagi. What it is, is an outstanding middleweight scooter that's easy to commute with and relatively easy to live with. Like we've said before, you may eventually want more scooter than this, but you're unlikely to ever need more scooter than this. And if you take care of it, it just might outlast your car. To see the latest price and any rider guide coupons we've got for you, check out the link in this video's description, and we'll pin it in the comments as well. I'm Paul from Rider Guide, and Enjoy your ride.